Hi there, I'm Amanda Castor with Material Girl Quilts. Today I'm here to share with you how to make a simple striped stadium quilt. Now this quilt is great for attending sporting events, putting down on the bleachers to make your seat more comfortable or wrapping up when it's cold weather outside. Um, the quilt I made behind me is in my son's school colors. It's actually my alma mater as well. And I decided for this quilt to applique the logo in the center of the quilt. So I'm going to show you today multiple options to make this quilt. You can make it like I did with um, stripes on each end and adding a logo in the center or you can um, maybe add a bigger stripe in the center and not have a logo or leave it plain in the center. Um, there, there's multiple ways you can make this quilt but it's really easy and it's a great quilt to carry with you for all of those sporting events, performing arts events, wherever you're going to go to show your school spirit and support your cause. So let's get started and I will show you how to cut the stripes for your quilt. So for this quilt, I wanted each stripe to be one piece of fabric. I didn't want to have to piece them together. So what you'll need to do is, um, for my finished quilt, it is 60 inches by 72 inches. So I had to make sure that I purchased at least 60 inches um, in length of fabric. So once you have your fabric that's at least 60 inches, um, you, you will take it and double it up fold it in half and you will then lay it on your cutting mat and make sure that the folded edge is lined up straight on the zero line and that the bottom of your fabric is also straight across one of the measurements on your cutting mat. Now you will need to cut um, to make a straight edge here on the end. So I ended up cutting mine at 30 and a half inches for each of my, uh, for both the black and the gold colors, so that um, once you sew all of your stripes together in your quilt, if it's off just a little bit, you'll have some extra room to just trim um, to make it even. So we will measure and cut at the 30 and a half inch mark. And so that gives you 61 inches um, and of length of fabric. So now to cut our stripes, we will need to then cut across this length of fabric instead of cutting across the width of fabric like you normally do. So once to do that, we have this already folded one direction. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and fold it again and line up this folded edge here and turn it. And for the middle section of my quilt, if you're gonna do what I've done here so that you have a wide section in the center that you'll either leave blank or applique a logo on, um, that section is 29 and a half inches that you need to cut. So then to cut that, I lined it up, the folds up again on the zero of my cutting mat then you will line up your ruler on the 15 inch mark. And so that will give you, since it's doubled up it, on the fold, that will give you 30 inches. So we'll go ahead and make that cut. And you'll see, once we open this up, we have 60 inches wide. And since it was on the fold, um, we have a 30 inches. So there is your center stripe. Now you can cut um, these two small black stripes here. Since this is doubled up, you will cut, it will be cutting two at a time. So you'll now just go ahead, those you cut at three inches because they finish at two and a half. So I will start at six cut, I think I missed a section, there we go, and then move it over to three, and there we go. So now we have all four of the small stripes that we needed to cut. So now all we have left to cut from the main uh, black fabric are the very um, end stripes. So those are, you will cut at eight and a half inches wide. And I went ahead and 
um, got another 60 inch length of fabric so that they would be one piece if you don't want to so then I had obviously I had um, extra fabric left over that I will just put into other projects but if you don't want to have a lot of excess fabric left over you'll need to get another yard of fabric and you can cut um, eight and a half inches uh, with by with the fabric you'll need four of those and then you'll have to piece them into sections that then finish at 60 inches um, in length so for the gold fabric that I use for the accent stripes you will need one um, 60 61 inch length of fabric that you will cut your stripes into and this large stripe here you will cut um, two that are four and a half inches then your middle stripe you will cut two at three and a half inches and then the skinniest stripe you will cut two at two inches um, then you will have a large section left over and what um, I use that for was to cut out my applique piece so um, just one 60, 61 inch length of fabric will be enough to cover all of your accent stripes plus your applique. Or if you, like I said, if you would like to use, um, add one wide, wider stripe here in the center, you can do that as well. And if you do the option where you add um, one wide stripe in the center of this accent color, you won't need as much of the black fabric. So you won't need to buy that additional yard of fabric there and all of the information for these different options will be in a printable pattern and that you can find in the comments below now that all your stripes are cut it's time to add the applique if you're going to do that option if you're not going to add your applique you can go ahead and sew all of your stripes together as shown in the diagram and your quilt will finish 60 inches by 72 inches now if you'd like to do the applique I'm going to show you the process for that now. The applique method I'm going to show you today is machine applique. So for us to do that, we will need some fusible um, interfacing. So there's a number of different products on the market that you can use. What I actually used for this project was a Pelham brand and it was called Wonder Under. And I'll include a link to the materials I used in the description below. Um, but what it does, it will make your fabric fusible so that you can attach, you know, iron on your your accent or your logo fabric onto the background stripe so the key thing to remember here when when doing this is if it's directional like a word that where that your letters are attached you're going to have to put it on your applique or on your fusible in the opposite direction because it will you're attaching the fusible to the back of your fabric so that is very key to remember when preparing your applique pieces another thing is if for a logo like this, obviously any logo I got from the school was much smaller than this. So you can take whatever um, logo or diagram you want to, to applique onto your quilt, take it to your local um, copy or print shop and ask them to enlarge it to whatever size you would like. And then once you have that, then you can transfer that onto your fusible interfacing. So what we will do um, today, I'm just going to use this simple letter A to show for our demonstration here, but um, it's also really nice to, if you have a logo that you need to reverse, if it's, you know, dark and filled in like this letter A, because when you go to, obviously the A is not directional, it, you know, it can go either way, it's one of those lucky letters for me, but you will trace, you'll put the um, rough side of this um, fusible onto the letter and you will trace and you will draw on the smooth side so again this is where if you have a directional logo or word you're gonna have to reverse it so that you are tracing and it's look it looks backwards as you're tracing now for this letter a um, there's a lot of straight edges and so I find it's simplest for when you're doing straight edges to just go ahead and get a ruler and for tracing instead of freehand doing that so you just trace all around whatever shape or logo that you're going to be doing I 
line that back up since I moved it. Okay, so now that we have our A traced onto our fusible, we can cut this out and we were going to then iron it on to the back side of the fabric that we're gonna use for the applique. I'm actually just gonna, because I have it handy, go ahead and use my rotary cutter. Okay, now you will want to follow the instructions that are provided by the manufacturer for your app, for your fusible. Um, but from for my so for the instructions for the the materials that I'm using, you will take your um, applique again. The rough side goes towards the back side of your fabric, and then you will use. I actually press it this this direction with the um, fabric on top and you use a dry iron for like five to eight seconds to get that to adhere to your fabric. So now we have our um, fusible attached to this fabric. Now we're going to let this cool a little bit and then what we're going to do is cut out directly on the lines to get the shape of our logo. Now again, to cut this, since it's um, a lot of straight lines, I'm going to start with the, um, the ruler and the rotary cutter. Now for these smaller sections, I will use my small snips here to cut the rest of this. And when you have a, a section like this where you're cutting out of the center of something, like the center of this A, you can fold it and do a little clip so that you can get your scissors in there and then cut from there. And it's very important to have some really nice sharp scissors for this part. Okay, so now we have our letter A. So the next step is you will peel off the paper backing from your applique piece. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get it started and I have found that if you use a straight pin sometimes you can poke through this first layer and, uh, and separate or you know kind of rip a little piece of the paper back and that'll get it, that'll be a good spot to start. Okay, so we have ripped off the, the paper backing for our letter, and now it is time to iron it on to our um, main stripe fabric here. So, again, follow the manufacturer's instructions on for your particular fusible. Mine says that you should use a damp pressing cloth, but I honestly just usually, um, use my steam iron, a hot steam iron, and it works perfectly. So you want to center your logo onto your main stripe and then press usually for like 10 to 15 seconds to make sure that it's going to adhere completely.
And there we go. Now our logo is attached to our stripe. Now to finish this off, what I did is use a blanket stitch on my machine and stitch all the way around the outsides of all of the applique pieces as shown here. There's other options. You could do a straight stitch around the outside if you don't have a blanket stitch on your machine. This is just the option that I chose. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did, please click the like button and subscribe so that you won't miss any tutorials going forward. If you'd like to make your own stadium quilt, I would love to see it. Please tag me on social media at Material Girl Quilts and use the hashtag stadium quilt. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.